Hello, today we'll be talking about colorimetry with the following objectives. Define what colorimetry is, differentiate a specific heat and heat capacity, and last but not the least is to calculate the amount of heat absorbed or released by a substance. Let's start by defining what colorimetry is. Colorimetry is simply defined as the measurement of heat changes within a chemical reaction or other physical processes. It is also associated with determining the changes in energy of a system, measuring the heat exchange with the surroundings. Now this is what colorimetry is. Moving on, there are two properties being used to measure heat changes. One is specific heat characterized by lowercase s, and then heat capacity characterized by capital C. Let's define the two things. Specific heat of a substance is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of the substance by one degree Celsius. The unit will be joule per gram degree Celsius. For heat capacity, the heat capacity characterized by capital C of a substance is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of a given quantity of the substance by one degree Celsius, characterized by joule per degree Celsius. Now what are the difference? The difference between the two is that specific heat is an intensive property, meaning to say specific heat doesn't depend on the amount of matter whereas heat capacity is an extensive property that depends on the amount of matter. The relationship between the specific heat and heat capacity of the substance is given by the following formula. This is your heat capacity is equal to mass times specific heat. So we have this relationship combining specific heat and heat capacity. Again, you have here heat capacity is equal to mass times specific heat. Again, heat capacity is equal to mass times specific heat. Now you have here a, fa a table of sp specific heat of certain substances. Now you can actually search for other contents from uh, the internet or other resources that other substances has their specific heat. Okay. So say, for example, the specific heat for iron is actually 0 0.444 joule per gram degree Celsius, and then so on and so forth. Specific heat, in some cases, or other resources are actually given. Okay? How about heat or Q? Now, the specific heat in the amount of substance and the change in the sample's temperature will tell us the amount of heat it has been absorbed or released in a process, meaning to say we will be using specific heat and heat capacity to solve for the heat absorbed and released, meaning to say whenever there is an endothermic reaction, absorption, and exothermic reaction, release of heat, we can actually solve that particular value using specific heat and heat capacity. Now, what are the um you know the equations for this one we can actually use heat is equal to mass times specific heat times change in temperature or we can use heat is equal to heat capacity times change in t so we can actually use two different equations to solve for the heat absorbed or release. Remember, Q is equal to ms change in T. We can actually interchange or change mass times specific heat into heat capacity since we have this particular relationship wherein heat capacity is equal to mass times specific heat. So from the first equation, we can change mass times spe specific heat into heat capacity because again of this particular relationship. Okay. And let it be known that temperature change, do not forget, okay, 
is actually equal to final temperature minus initial temperature. Do not forget this one. Let's have a sample problem in applying this equations, okay? A 456 gram sample of water is heated from 22.0 degrees Celsius to 96.0 degrees Celsius. Calculate the amount of heat absorbed in joule by the water. The specific heat of water is 4.184 joule per gram degree Celsius. Now, first thing that you need to do is always write the given. Uh, final temperature, 96.0 degrees Celsius. Initial... 22.0 degrees Celsius, and then mass of the sample is 456 grams, and we have a specific heat, 4.184 joule gram degree Celsius. Okay, now at this point, the one we are required to solve for is heat, KQ, in the unit joule. And then the equation we will be using either of the two equations above. Now, since we already have here specific heat, okay, I think we it's better to use the first one. Ms change in P. Okay, very easy. Now, like, let's look at the solution here. I have the same given, and then they have here the change in P already, so I can actually simplify this one into 74. 0 degrees Celsius and then the required is there and then obviously the equation. Now solution I will just input the following and the equation I have 456 grams multiplied by 4.184 joule per gram um, degree Celsius and then multiplied by 74 0.0 degrees Celsius. Canceling the units, I will have joule, which is the one I require. Input this one in the calculator, I have this particular answer. 141,000 joule, or you can actually express this into scientific notation, 1.41 times 10 raised to 5 joule. Okay? Let me give another example. All right, let me read the problem. A 2.80 gram sample of a pure metal requires 10.0 joule of energy to change its temperature by 15.0 degrees Celsius. Calculate the specific heat of the metal. So this is a very uh, different um, problem, okay? So let's try by writing the given mass 2.80 gram and we have here the temperature already 15.0 degrees Celsius. Actually the change in temperature change in temperature and we have here requires 10.0 joule of energy. So I believe that is heat because the one we require is specific heat. The unit for specific heat is joule per gram degree Celsius. Remember that one. So to solve for joule per gram degree Celsius, I already have the appropriate unit, so no problem with that one. Equation is Q is equal to ms change in T. Now since the requirement is a specific heat, I need to create an equation for it. So I derive or convert the equation by simply dividing both sides by mass, change in T, cancel, cancel, and then this one we M, change in T. I have specific heat is equal to Q all over M, change in T. Now with the solution, I just simply input the following and the equation. All right, so I have the same given. That's good. Required the specific heat. And then equation, all right? So Q is the joule all over 2.80, um, what is this one? 2.80 grams multiplied by 
upon 0 degrees Celsius. So I have the appropriate unit, Joule per gram degree Celsius. Can you put that one in the equation? Okay, so I have the same equation, Q all over M change in T. Same solution, input in the calculator. I have 0 0.238 Joule per gram degree Celsius with that of the power point. Okay, this is very easy. Another example. A piece of iron with a mass of 250.0 gram has heated from a temperature of 34 degrees Celsius to 108 degrees Celsius. What is the amount of heat in kilojoule absorbed by the metal? The specific heat of iron is 0.444 joule per gram degree Celsius. Always write the given mass 250.0 gram, final temperature 108 degrees Celsius, initial. 34 degrees Celsius. Specific heat of iron is provided. 0.444 joule gram degree Celsius. The one required is heat, but this time it must be in kilojoule. No problem with that one. Um, equation. Now since we have here specific heat, I may use the first format. Q is equal to ms change in T. Now, I actually have appropriate units here, so I can actually simply input this one in the equation. To 50.0 gram, specific it is 0.444 joule gram degree Celsius, and then multiplied, you just with this one, okay? 108 degree Celsius minus 34 degree Celsius. Now, simplifying 108 minus 34, okay, before I proceed with uh, cancellation, 108 minus 34, I have 74 degrees Celsius. So this could, this will be 74 degrees Celsius. I mean, now proceed with cancellation. Grams will be canceled. Degree Celsius will be canceled. I now have Joule. Input the calculator. 250.0 multiplied by 0 0.444 multiplied by 74. I have 8,214. 8,214 joule. Okay. Now, if you're kind of picky with how I did the solution, so we put parentheses, okay? 250.0. Multiplied by 0 0.444, and then another multiplication here. So 108 minus 34, 8,214 still. However, this is not yet the final answer because we need kilojoule. So we need to derive 8,214 joule into kilojoule using the conversion factor 1 kilojoule all over 1,000 joule. Cancel, cancel. We have kilojoule here. 8,204 uh, multiplied by the quantity 1 all over 1,000 joule. I have 8.214. 8.214 kilojoule is our final answer. Very easy. At this point, I'll be actually giving you a sample problem. Try solving this. When a 120 gram sample of aluminum absorbs 9,612 joules of energy, its temperature increases from 25 degrees Celsius to 115 degrees Celsius. Find the specific heat of aluminum. You may try answering this one and then send your solution and answer to your subject teacher for them to check it for you. That ends actually our lesson for calorimetry and I hope you learned how to solve specific heat and heat capacity under which for calorimetry. Thank you and have a great day.